thank you and welcome back to our video series on AOS CX with Aruba Central 2.5.2. Today we're going to talk about monitoring and reporting with CX switches in Central. So first as we can see here we are logged into a site. So Central we have the capability to group devices uh, by a site or a location. So as we see we're here at our location, the TME lab at the uh, HPE campus here in Roosevelt and we have our switches that we've been working with installed in the lab and so we can group our devices uh, based on location that way if uh, you know you have a tech on site at 3 a.m. and you need to figure out uh, which switch to get to you can at least group your devices by site so if you're seeing issues you'll know which site it's located at that way you can dispatch the person to go uh, locate the offending device uh, at the specific location. So from the site here we can see statistics of clients that are connected. Uh, we can also see any changes that have been done on the switches at the site. Uh, so the uh, circles here show, let's actually let's, uh, let's scroll back over a day here, see if that changes, no, that didn't change, but so the circles here indicate uh, when a configuration change is when a configuration change was done. So none is indicated by a clear circle, fused by a gray circle, and many by a dark circle. Uh, let's look over the past week. Now if we extrapolate it out a week, we can see when changes were happened uh, over time. We can see the client count over time as devices rebooted and how much bandwidth utilization has been done, as well as any down devices that we can see over a period of time. We would also see any high CPU or high memory issues, and then the 5 gig and 2.4 gig utilization of noise is specific for uh, wireless devices. Uh, we can also look at the topology view and see the devices that are installed in our network. Um, red means one's down, so this switch is uh, currently not connected into the network, but if it was, it would show up as green. So let's move into our group. We'll take a look at further into um, monitoring specific devices. So from the group overview page, it would show us uh, any usage and clients connected to our switch. So we're using the 6300 VSF group that we had before. And uh, as time goes on, these uh, graphs would be populated more. Uh, we can set this back to three hours and see the utilization that's been done over the past three hours. If we click on devices, we'll go to switches. And then we'll click on our switch that we have connected. So from here, we can see details of our a summary of the what's configured on the switch. So the, the model, uh, commander, serial number. Uh, if we specified a location or a contact, that would be listed here. Which firmware we're running, uh, when the last stats were received if the configuration is in sync or not, as well as which group it belongs to. We can see network information, such as the IP address, what the default VLAN is, our stack members up or down, what the stack topology is, if, the, if it's a stack or a standalone switch. We can see ports that are up and down. Uh, that way, if you know, we have an issue, middle of the night, have to log on, find out if ports are down. Uh, if we know the port count and we see uh, you know we have three up instead of we, but we know we should have four we know that this is a quick way to view that status uh, we can see a quick power over ethernet overview so right now we're currently using 11 watts of poe power as well as anything with the power supplies or fans and cpu memory and temperature we can also see the usage that's uh, going on currently on the switch as well as uh, stack detail information such as which member ID is for which model and what MAC address and serial number, the stack role and the status. So it's the same. This would be the same as showing doing a uh, show VSF command on the switch CLI. If we click on the hardware details, we'll see more specific information about the hardware. So the total indicates the, the total in column here indicates the total amount of that hardware that can be installed in the switch. So we knew the top, we know the top uh, switch is a 6300M, so we know it's a modular switch and that it can hold two power supplies. 
Uh, we only have one currently installed and there's none down. So we can deduct from this, deduce from this that there's only, that it can hold two power supplies but it only has one installed. So well, same with fans. We know it has two fan trays. Each fan tray has two fans. So there's only two up, none down, so there's only one fan tray installed. Then we can see CPU, memory, and temperature sensor utilization. As we scroll down, we can see more details into that. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have one power supply up, one not present. Same with the fans, one fan tray installed, one not present. As well as we can see a trend of CPU and memory utilization over time. So this is over the past three hours, as indicated here. Uh, if we wanted to see a week's worth, we can go to a week, and it would show the trends of the CPU. So it looks like it's been pretty steady, as well as memory utilizations uh, bounce between 17 and 16 percent. And then thermals, we can look at specific uh, sensor information and see a trend over that and we can look and make sure all the uh, current statuses are in the desired range. Let's navigate over to the client screen. So the client screen shows all the clients that are currently connected to the switch and basically the switch is uh, counting every MAC address that it sees in its MAC table as a client. So we can see here we had two client three two clients that were connected and then the uplink switch over the lag. So if we clicked on a client, we can see specifically how it's connected and to which switch uh, upstream it's connected to. And we could see any uh, MAC address details, uh, what VLAN it is, uh, any specific usage over the over the link. To that client. Let's go back to our switch. Click to devices, switches, back to the same same view we had before. Back to clients. So the client screen can also show, as we see here in the legend, uh, if there's a client connected the port would be teal indicating that's non-tunneled. If it was doing user-based tunneling you would see a U over the port for uh, AOS switch capable switches and you're running port-based tunneling you would see a P over the port. So that's what we can see from the client's perspective. From the neighbor's perspective, if we click on neighbors we can see basically LDP information so we can see what the switch is currently connected what's connected to the switch as well as what the switch is connected to so we can see we have two APs currently connected to the switch uh, a 204 and a 325 Aruba AP as well as we can see we have a lag connected to the upstream 2930M switch so this would show us we can see the details from here what VLANs those are on uh, what capabilities it is so we know the APs uh, WLAN for wireless and then the lag is doing bridging as well as on the remote side uh, if that's using bond zero that's what the AP is reporting as well as the remote port on the 2930M is port 3 and port 5 as well as we see the port information that it's connected to. So that's the view from the client perspective. Let's click on the LAN perspective. So the LAN, we can view three types of things on the LAN perspective. We can see port information, PoE information, and VLAN information. So on the port information, things that are connected to it, uh, if it's up, is indicated by this teal, this teal colored port indicating up. Gray is down, red with a warning sign is alert, and then the uh, gray striped is disabled, and then the white uh, white port is an uplink. So we can see here we have the uh, upstream switch is connected on both port port one of both stack members and then there are a access two access points one in port seven one in port 15. If I wanted to get more details I could click on that port and it would give me specific details on that port such as usage, the port MAC address, admin state, and VLAN assignment. If I want to see the whole list of ports, I could scroll down and in this menu it shows the same thing. 
in more detail, we can see each port, what its status is, if it's a member of a lag, the port MAC address, VLAN assignment, native VLAN, and then the reason the port would be down. Like most of these say waiting for link, so the port is currently down. Any lags that are configured, we can see down here at the bottom. Uh, if it's a MC lag with over from a VSF, VSX capable device, we could see that here in the VSX column. Moving over to PoE, so the PoE screen shows the total status of the PoE, uh, total available PoE budget, how much is being used, how much is being as remaining, any PoE denied ports, as well as any PoE alerts. So we could see here on the little switch diagram, we have two ports that are drawing power as indicated by the legend. So teal is showing that it's drawing a lightning bolt with a empty, you know, no color lightning bolt with a, a teal outline is enabled. Uh, gray stripes means it's disabled as we see on the standby switch, which uh, this is not a non PoE switch and any PoE alerts would be indicated by red. If we wanted to see more information on the PoE, we could click on a PoE enabled port that's delivering, so port 7 here. And if we click on that, we could see how much power is being reserved, uh, how much is being drawn, how much voltage, uh, any amperage. Uh, this graph here shows a tr power consumption trend, so if we see some very high spikes, we know there could be an issue with the device that it's consuming uh, large amounts of wattage at certain periods of time and we could do further troubleshooting there. So that trend will give us an idea of uh, over a period of time whether we want to set it to three hours, weeks, or a month. We could see the trends of the uh, power draw on that device. If we click on slot info and PoE configuration that shows us uh, you know how much total budget, how much we're actually using from the switch uh, for specific to the port the PoE class type, what the allocate, allocation, how it's currently allocating PoE power. So this is currently by usage, and if it's enabled or disabled. If we click on LDP information, that would show us any uh, PoE settings that we have specifically configured for LDP med, which we're not currently using at this time. So that's PoE. Um, over time, this PoE consumption will show. Uh, let's see if it'll show if I zoom out for a week. Yeah, so if I go out a week, it will show the average usage of the switch. So we can see for the entire switch uh, the current trends with PoE consumption on uh, total overall on the switch. Let's look at from the VLAN tab here. So this shows all the VLANs that are currently configured and by default the default VLAN is selected. So then the graph here, sh graphical guess, the graphical representation of the switch shows us which ports are assigned to this VLAN. So a port assigned to the VLAN is indicated by a teal port so all these ports are configured for VLAN 1 currently. If we wanted to do VLAN 200 we could click on 200 then we can see ports 3, 4, and 7 are uh, untagged to VLAN 200. We can see up here in the table, this shows us the tagged ports, untagged ports, IP address that's configured on the VLAN, if the VLAN's a voice VLAN, or uh, IGP enabled on, the, on that VLAN. So those are the things that we can see from the uh, VLAN perspective. Now let's click on the device tab here. So this shows variables specific to that device. So if we want to change a setting specific, specific to the device, change any variables, we could do that here. Note this would overwrite anything that's configured at the group. So we, strong, we recommend uh, configure everything at the group setting. Only use this if you absolutely had to change something at the device level. If you do a configuration audit, that would show any uh, failed or pending configuration changes specific to the device. You can also view specific configuration on the device that you want to push compared to the running configuration. Uh, we're currently working through some of these formatting 
uh, it's highlights red even though the formatting is just a little, couple spaces off so we're currently working through that but the red would usually indicate that there's a configuration uh, wrong on the pending configuration and then you could go and change that to match uh, or to, to match what you want what you would expect on the running configuration so that is uh, that is currently what we can do for monitoring on CX switches and Aruba Central 2.5.2. From our main group overview page, we can create reports. So if we wanted to create a report for groups, uh, we make sure we are in the group context, and we can go to reports. And from reports, we can schedule a report. So if we wanted to click the plus button, this will schedule a new report. Uh, there's different reports that we can configure. Uh, a lot of these are for gateways and IEPs. Specific to switch, we can do new infrastructure inventory, capacity planning, infrastructure inventory, uh, network, and client inventory, and switch capacity planning. So for this one, we're going to generate an infrastructure inventory report, and we're going to do on all our CX enabled groups. And we're going to click next. Uh, we can do it one time now. We can do it, set it, schedule it for later. We can run it every day, every week, or every month. So for now, let's schedule it for now. We're going to give it a report title, and I'm going to email it to myself. We can send reports to uh, via email. And then I'm going to either get it in a PDF format or a CSV format. And then when we're ready, we could generate that format. So I wanted to run this infrastructure inventory report because I wanted to make sure all my switches are running uh, the appropriate firmware. Uh, so I can run a regular report to view those switches and to make sure they're running uh, either the updated firmware or the firmware that I set for compliance for my network. So then we're going to generate this report, and then it's scheduled successfully. Uh, we could go to Report Summary, and actually I can go from a global setting. Uh, let me change the, click on Reports again, so it reschedules it. So if I had scheduled reports, they would be here. All my generated reports I can browse and find here. So the report I just ran was this test report 100. I could click on that report. And from here I can view the PDF, I can view the CSV file, or I can get it emailed to me. So I've already had it emailed to me. So I can go, I'd get an email like this. So I'd be looking for an email from no reply to ribbonnetworks.com. And it would say the test report title and the date. And then I can open up the file so that I can view the contents of the report. So if we see here, I can see my APs, but I'm concerned about switches. And that shows the switch models. And then later on, I can see the actual firmware version of the switches. So I can see I have 80% of my switches running 10.5.10, and then I have one running 1051. So then I know I need to go update that one switch to make sure that all of my switches are on the latest firmware. So that's something handy with a report how we can utilize reports for our uh, inventory within from central. Very handy feature. That is reporting. Tune in next time for troubleshooting. Thank you.